Hello. In our lesson for today, we are going to learn how to solve linear equations. Equations are identities between two expressions. To solve an equation, it means to find the value for the variable, which is called solution. And to find the solution, we have to isolate the variable using the inverse of the given operations. Let's have a look. If we have 2 x plus 4 all over 3 minus 8 equals to 32. The first observation. So, this is the equal sign. We have expression left of the equal sign and expression right of it. Now, the variable, it is only in one side of this, exp uh, of this equation. In our case, it's in the left side. The easiest that we can do, in my belief, is first of all, to get rid of this denominator. So, this denominator, it will be a problem, a big problem. Very a small problem for me. So I prefer, first of all, to get rid of this denominator, that I do not have to work with fractions. So here it is given divided by 3. We said that to solve equation, we use the inverse of the given operation. And here the operation is a divided by 3. So to make this divided by 3 disappear, I will do it times Three. But whatever is done for one term in the, uh, in the equation, I have to do it for all of them to balance this equation. So if for the first term we do times 3, then for the second one for negative 8, I will do times 3. And the 32, I will do times 3 too, that I can balance this equation. When I do for the first times 3, the denominator will disappear. It will be left to x plus 4 minus 8 times 3 is 24 equals 32 times 3. It will be equals to 96. Now we remove the bracket because the x, the variable, it's inside of this bracket. So to remove the bracket, we have to use the distributive property of multiplication. It's a 2 times x and 2 times 4. It will be 2 times x, it's 2x, plus 2 times 4, it is 8. Minus 24 equals to 96. So, left of equals, this is an algebraic expression. And we know that expressions, we have to simplify them by collecting the like terms and combining them. So, I have like terms 8 and negative 24. I collect them first. And down, I will combine. And 8 minus 24, it's a negative 16, equals to 96. The variable term is here, so x, it's in this term. I will remove the 16 by using the inverse of negative 16, which is plus 16, in both of the sides. Again, whatever is done in one side, I have to do in the other side of the equals. And I go down to x equals 6 plus 6 is 12, 10 and 1, 11. The operation between 2 and 6 is a times. So the inverse of times is divided by 2. And we'll do it in both of the sides. Then x equals 11 divided to it's 5, 12, it's a 6. So this is called solution. If we have 4 plus fraction 9, 3x minus 1 over 2 
equals to 9. As I did before, because of the fraction, I don't want to keep working with fractions. So for me, it's much easier. So instead of divided by 2, I will do the inverse of divide, which is times 2. And whatever is done for one term, I do it for all of them. So 4 times 2 and 9 times 2. From left into the right, 2 times 4, 8. Plus 2 goes with 2, it will be left 3x minus 1 equals 9 times 2, it is 18. Left of equals, we have an algebraic expression and we will simplify by collecting the like terms and combining them. The like terms are 8 and negative 1. I collect by underlining and after I will combine them. 8 minus 1, it's 7. Plus 3x equals 18. The variable term is here. Yes. And then I will remove the 7 on the other side. Minus 7. Minus 7. So it will be equals. 3x equals. 18 minus 7, it is 11. The operation between 3 and x, it is times. So I will do the inverse of times, which is divided by 3 on both of the sides. So x equals 11 over 3. This is the solution. The sum of three consecutive integers, it's 132. Consecutive, it means that the integers, they come in counting order. For example, 8, 9, 10. If I know the first integer, to get the second one, I will do plus 1. To find the next one, I will do plus 2. The next one, 11. I will go and do plus 3 and so on. So the most important integer, the most important integer in this group, it's the first one. If I know the first one, to get the next one, I'll do plus 1 and after plus 2 and plus 3 and so on. So they tell us some of three consecutive integers. I don't know them, so I can write the first integer plus the second integer plus the third one, their sum is 132. We said the most important integer, the most important value is the first one. And I don't know it, that's why I'm going to put variable x instead of it. If I know the first integer, to get the next one, I will do plus 1. So the next integer, it will be x plus 1. To get the next one after, I will do from the first one plus 2. So here it will be x plus 2. Now we remove the bracket and we write x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2 equals 132. We collect the like terms and combine them x plus x plus x, which equals 3x. And we have the like terms, the constant here, the constant. 1 plus 2, it's a positive 3. And this it is equals 132. So we got the simplest form. The variable term, it's here, so this one is the last one we will uh, window. We have a plus 3, the inverse of plus 3, it's minus 3 on both of the sides. And it will be 3x equals 129. The operation between 3 and x, it's times. We will put the times here and the inverse of times is divide. So divided by 3 on both of the sides. It will be x equals 43. The sum 
of three consecutive odd integers. So again, consecutive it means that they come in order. And odd integers, they are all the integers which are not divisible by two. For example, if I know the first odd, I can say which ones are the ones uh, which ones are the next ones. So let's say the first integer it is three. The odd, the first odd, it is three. The next one it will be five. And then seven, nine, and so on. So from three to five, we do plus two. Three to seven plus four. Three to nine plus six and so on. So the most important the integer in the sequence is the first one. If I know the first one, then very easy I will find the others. Plus two, plus four, plus six, plus eight, plus ten, and so on. So then from here we can write like this the three consecutive odd integers, we don't know them. So I put one, the first one, plus the second, plus the third, equals 57. The most important integer is the first one. If I know the first odd integer, to find the second one, I will do a plus 2. So it will be here, x plus 2. To get the next one, from the first one into it, I will do a plus 4. So the third integer, odd, it will be x plus 4. Remove the brackets from left to right, we will have x plus, x plus 2, plus, x plus 4, equals 257. We get the expression in simplest form, follow the like terms. So, x plus x plus x, it will be 3x plus the constant terms, like terms, 2 plus 4, 7, 6 equals 257. The variable so, plus 6, the inverse is the minus 6 in both of the sides, and 3x equals 251. We look for x only, and here we got 3. So, the inverse of the inverse of the The inverse of so divided by 3 on both of the sides. x equals 17. Plus 10 plus 2t. So the variable it's in the right side of the equal sign. So we have here expression. First of all, expression will get its simplest form. So negative 2, keep it equals. Call it the like terms t with t. So negative 5t plus 2t, it will be negative 3t plus. 10. The variable term is here. We do not need the plus 10 to isolate the t, so we will do under it minus 10 on both of the sides. Negative 2 minus 10 is a negative 12 equals negative 3t. We need only t. The operation between is time, so we will undo the times which is divide by negative 3 on both of the sides, and we will find that t equals to 4. Ten bracket 5 minus 10 minus 1 equals to 29. So the variable is inside of the bracket. First of all, according with order of operations, we are going to remove the bracket using the distributive property of multiplication. So 10 times 5, 10 times negative n. 10 times 5, it's 50. 10 times negative n, it's a negative 10n. 
minus 1 equals to 29. Left of equals, we get the expression in simplest form. So, 50 minus 1, 49 minus 10 and equals 29. The variable term, it's a positive 49, so the inverse of it, it's a negative 49. Negative, so minus 49 on both of the sides. To balance the equation, it will be negative 10 and equals negative 20. Over negative 10 on both of the sides, it will be n equals negative to negative positive and 20 over 10 it is 2. The positive sign we do not have to write it. over 4 minus m over 12 equals 7 over m. So, the variable term, it's in the left side of the equals and we have here two terms which are fractions. To plus or minus fractions, remember that we need the same denominator and the same denominator between 4 and 12, it is 12. So, we'll do 4 times 3 and on numerator also we'll do it times 3 and we'll go down and we'll simplify. 3m times 3, it is 9m minus m all over 12 equals 7 over 8. We can simplify more 9m minus m which is 8m. equals 7 over 8. We can simplify the fraction by common factor, which is 4. So it will be left 2m over 3 equals 7 over 8. Two fractions are equals if they have the same numerator, same denominator. So here we can do it or by finding same denominator, and remove it or simply use the cross product. This is a proportion and it will be 2m times 8 equals 16m. And this one equals 3 times 7, 21. Over 16, over 16, it will be m equals 21 over 16. One point zero three seven e plus zero point zero two x plus twenty five equals thirty point two eight five. So first of all, collect the like terms and get this expression into the simplest form. So it will be here. 1.057x plus 25 equals to 30.285. The variable term is here, so we will undo the positive 25 by doing minus 25 on both of the sides. So it will be... 5.285 over 1.057 over 1.057. So x it will be equals, let's put it on the calculator. So 5.285 divided by 1.057, it will be equals to 5.
Thank you.